welcome to the numerical ship and offshore hydrodynamics in lecture 14. Today we are going to discuss a very important concept which is Green's function and this is the keyword that you are going to use to get this lecture. Now what is the bound value problem or the Green's function method? Now in the last class I discussed that that typically uh, this boundary integral method is looks like this and we have derived that that phi any point of the phi can be explained in the distribution of the singularities over the surface. Now, here uh, the same thing that g is nothing but that 1 upon r that we are going to take in the last class. However, in our case like our problem also not very simple. Now, 1 upon r is uh, very good if you if you take like uh, a find out that uh, the pressure of a body absence of free surface. And nowadays people are also uh, taking 1 upon r which is uh, popularly known as Rankine panel method. Uh, they try to find out the, the pressure of a body over the uh, surface everything uh, considering the g equal to 1 upon r. However, there are other methodologies also where instead of 1 upon r they are taking 1 upon r plus some other functions. So, we are going to discuss all these things uh, in future. So, that is why instead of 1 upon r I am writing a general function g. Okay. So, here you can see that this integral equation you can call this integral equation it is alpha phi phi p equal to integral over the surfaces then phi q delta g delta n p q t etcetera etcetera etcetera. Now, we need to understand what is the all quantities over here. Now, this alpha p basically you can call this as a solid angle. Now, what is the solid angle we are going to discuss later on. Here we are just going to discuss about the two things one is p and another is on q. Now, what is the p? p is the point anywhere in the fluid domain. Okay. However, q is the point on the surface. Now, you can see over here that any point on the fluid domain the velocity potential at any point on the fluid domain can be determined if I know the velocity potential over the surface right. Also, the normal that del phi del n also on the surface. So, that is why you can see over the integral this is basically we are going through the q not p. So, you can understand that p is the point on a fluid domain however, q is the point on the surface. So, therefore, in order to get the interesting part is that that in order to find out the velocity potential at any point on the fluid domain we really no need to discretize the entire fluid domain right we have to discretize the surface. So, that is a very interesting thing right. Okay. But here you can see that there are two things that actually we need to find out. The first thing that what would be the g? g is the as I said the Green's function when, but what is the value we have to know the value of g to solve this problem right. This is one thing and second thing we need to know what is the value of phi at the surface right and also what is the value of del phi del n on the surface. But you know I know from my boundary condition if you remember my previous classes we discussed del phi del n should be equal to the V n over the body right. So, and then we have the kinematic free surface condition. So, therefore, somehow I understand del phi del n also known to me. Definitely we are going to discuss everything uh, later on, but now here just I am just to give you some kind of feeling. Okay. And then major part now boils down to how to find out the phi at q this is the number one problem and number two problem is how I can get the g. So, today 
actually uh, let us try to find out I, how I, we can get the value for g and it is extremely complicated thing, but you know just to give you some kind of feeling some essence that how we get the value for g we are taking a very elementary uh, problem where that finding out the Green's function is easy. However, in our class of problem this g is already known to me. However, getting g is one problem that we suppose we have the g still it is very difficult to solve this integral equation. So, in coming days numerically how we are solving this we are going to discuss extensively. Right now let us try to find out how we can get the Green's function, how we can find out the g for simplified problem. Okay. Okay. So, now uh, let us take an one dimensional case in that is the general strategy to find out the g. So, first thing let us we have a differential equation l u equal to f x. Now, what is l? l u called as a linear operator. Now, what is the definition of linear operator? Let us not go into this, but you know accept that that Laplacian is a linear operator. So, del square phi by del x square plus del square phi by del y square plus del square phi by del z square that is a that operator is a linear operator that means del square operator is a linear operator. Okay. Now, suppose l u equal to f x if this is your differential equation. So, then the solution first to find out the solution that l u equal to 0 which is called the homogeneous problem. Okay. So, once you know this uh, l u equal to 0, so then actually your Green's function solution can be given as this expression. So, see thing is that you can find out a function Green's function if l u equal to 0, then you can find out some function and then I mean we can call this a trial function and then actually we can uh, manipulate this trial function and we can obtain the Green's function and once you know the Green's function from direct integration we can find out the solution. So, this is the strategy. Okay. Now, this Green's function for a second order differential equation can be found out from this equation. Now, you can see it is very formidable right you have some what is y 1 s, what is y 2 x, what is w nothing is known to me right. Also, but I know that that, that boundary is from a to b because it is a one dimensional problem. So, it is a length. So, limit is from a to b, but I really do not understand what is the s, what is the x etcetera etcetera right. So, we will get to know by solving this problem. Okay. So, now uh, let us find out the general strategy. The first we have to find out the solution e u 1 and u 2 for l y equal to 0. So, that means the differential equation anything any linear differential equation if you make the right hand side equal to 0 and if you try to solve this problem if you able to solve this problem then you can get two solution e 1 and u 2. Then we have to next step what we need to do is suppose I have two solutions if it is second order differential equation for example, like your y double dot plus y equal to 0 right if this is a classical second order equation and if you have the solution is sin sin t and cos t right. So, d square y by d t square plus y equal to 0 the solution is sin t cos t. So, you know that if you have a second degree differential equation definitely you can have two solution. So, here also we have two solution let us see u 1 and u 2 and then we need to find out another solution y 1 which satisfy the first boundary condition and again we are finding out the another function y 2 which satisfying the second boundary condition and actually this actually we are going by the trial method. Okay. I mean there is lot of other things, but for the simplified problem we can find out using the trial method. Now, 
once we find out this y 1 and y 2, then you know that from my this expression we can find out the Green's function g. So, this is the strategy I have a differential equation. So, I make the right hand side equal to 0 and then I find out two trial solution u 1 and u 2 and from that I can find out y 1 and y 2, y 1 satisfying the first boundary condition and y 2 satisfying the second boundary condition. And once I find out this y 1 and y 2, definitely I know what would be my Green's function. So, this is the idea. Okay. Okay. Now, let us uh, take one problem. Now, you see here this problem is very simple y double as x equal to x square, you really do not have to do all this Green's function technique to get this solution right. Well, now, now let us go I mean also this boundary condition is given is y 0 equal to 0 and y 1 equal to 0. So, then what is my first objective to find a trial solution y double dash x equal to 0. Then what would be the solution you can see like by you know you can get by trial you can get many solution right. So, we have to have two solution u 1 and u 2. So, I take that first solution u 1 equal to x and second solution u 2 equal to as I said that I do it uh, you know trial method by anticipating this is the solution right. So, of course, this is a solution if you differentiate u 1 2 times you are 0, you differentiate u 2 2 times it is 0. So, my next job is find out y 1 1 function with the linear combination of u 1 and u 2 such that y 1 satisfy the first boundary condition which is y 0 equal to 0. And similarly, with the linear combination of u 1 and u 2, we have to find out another solution y 2 okay, such that this second boundary condition also satisfies which is y 1 equal to 0. Okay. Let us find out. Now, I have u 1 equal to x and then I have u t equal to 1. So, then I can find that y 1 equal to x and then that satisfy my the first boundary condition y 0 equal to 0, right. Because if you put here 0, then it is 0, so y 0 equal to 0. Now, what would be thus u y 2? Now, y 2 again you can see that y 2 also find out in the linear combination of the u 1 and u 2 which is u 2 minus u 1 that is 1 minus x. Now, you see this y 2 is now satisfying my second boundary condition right. So, u 2 x is 1 minus x you put x equal to 1 then y 2 equal to 0. So, therefore, now I am ready I have my y 1 which is x and I am having the y 2 which is 1 minus x. Now, how do I write the Green's function for this particular problem? Okay. Now, this to my solution y 1 x and y 2 equal to 1 minus x. Now, first I need to find out the w right remember and this w is nothing but the Ronskian and this is the formula to get the Ronskian which is y 1 y 2 y 1 dash y 2 dash. So, it is x 1 minus x if you differentiate this you will get 1 and if you differentiate the second term we will get minus 1 and then finally, we get the value is minus 1. So, I get w equal to minus 1. Now, the question is how do I write the Green's function. Okay. Now, let me explain this carefully. Now, here this 0 to 1 I split in in between there is a two point one is a variable point s we call x is s is a variable point and finally, you know the x should be another variable, but at this particular moment I can consider this as a fixed point between 0 to 1. So, therefore, and this s this variable s running from 0 to 1. Okay. Now, here in the first time when this s let us say x as I said that x right now 
is a fixed point between 0 to 1. So, therefore, this domain 0 to 1 now I can split into two different domain right. Now, this domain 0 to 1. So, this 0 to 1 I can split into two sub domain one is 0 to x and second domain is x to 1 and then I can I can tell that this s firstly vary over 0 less than s less than x and in the second case this s is varies along x to 1. So, once it is from the first case, so then I replace this y 1 by the variable point s and, and, and I keep y 2 as as it is. Okay. So, that is why we call this function is s into 1 minus x and I need to divide by the wrong scale. So, I divide it. So, I get it is minus 1. In case of a second, in case of a uh, sorry in case of this second interval I keep this y 1 with the x is a fixed one and then I va vary this one y 2 as 1 minus s. So, I replace x by s in the next domain and of course, I divide it by the Ronsky and minus 1. Okay. So, once we do that, so once we do that we will get the expression for the Green's function. Okay. Now, once we get this Green's function, then remaining part is elementary. So, remaining part is as follows this is your solution u x equal to a to b Green's function multiplied by the f s. Now, in our case, my problem is what? My problem is y double dot x is equal to a square. So, this f s is nothing but my s square and this Green's function actually I can uh, write this Green's function of course, this a to b now actually I split into two domain one is integration of a to x this is the first domain and then second domain integration of x to b and I part from the integration. Okay. So, if I do this if I do this, let us see what we can get. So, now you can see that I have now in my case it is 0 to 1. So, I have 0 to x and then this is s and this is the first Green's function s into x minus 1 into s square and then in between x to 1 I am using the second part of the Green's function which is x into s minus 1 into s square. Now, you see that this is the solution for x right. Now, if you solve it you will get y x equal to 1 upon 2 x to the power 4 minus x. You see that you know it, it is actually very simple. Now, if now what I get is from here the thing I am getting is if my solution I mean this uh, the differential equation is simple and if the boundary condition also simple. So, I can really find out the Green's function. So, it is not that difficult to find out the Green's function let us say and then the solution again become very simple. So, this exercise will tell you for a simple problem how I can find the Green's function right. So, now uh, this is the, 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 the class work for you, you try to solve this problem using the bounded using the Green's function. So, first you find out the Green's function and then you solve this problem. Okay. Okay. So, now uh, so till now we we actually solve one thing we get one integral equation which have a part which is called the Green's function and then some part called the velocity potential. So, I know right now that I have two unknown one is the Green's function and second one is the velocity potential over the surface right I am hammering that part over the surface right because this gives us 
the enormous advantage over the you know other type of numerical technique. Now, let us see that what other type of numerical techniques are available to solve this uh, you know ship structure in, I mean ship wave interaction problem or fluid stretch interaction problem. So, we are now discussing with the bound integral equation which is here. Okay. However, we can use the finite difference method also I, or we can use the finite element method also. These two are also very popular method especially finite element method for the structural analysis is very very popular and then typical uh, you know to find out the uh, any 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 classical CFD problem we are using the finite difference method or finite volume method. So, those, these methods are very popular of course. Now, the difference between the boundary integral equation method or this finite difference method or finite element method here the domain discretization. Now, you see here in case of a finite difference method or finite element method we need to discretize the whole computational domain. I must tell you this boundary integral equation is popular uh, only especially in this uh, you know this hydrodynamics numerical ship hydrodynamics this domain and also in very popular to solve this fluid problem I mean if you consider this potential theory, but it is not very popular to solve you know that uh, generic problem mostly people use the finite difference method and finite element method or finite volume method to handle all sort of you know fluid structure problem or fluid stretch interaction problem definitely. However, we prefer boundary integral equation method over this why because the main problem is the domain discretization here our entire fluid domain is basically the ocean. Now, this discretize the ocean surface or the, the total volume it is not easy and it is not uh, you know worthy also. So, therefore, if you use the finite difference or finite element method you have to discretize the whole computational domain right and this is you know uh, in fact all this study started during the 70s or 80s that time we, we really cannot think of discretize the whole ocean using this some finite element grid or finite difference grid. However, in case of a boundary integral method you only need to discretize the computational boundary remember I said the velocity potential at any point in the fluid domain can be found if we solve the velocity potential that is distributed over the surface. So, therefore, in case of a boundary element we only need to discretize the boundary. Now, I can see here you have the case 1 and case a 2. So, let us see what is the case a 1 and what is the case a 2. Now, here you can see the computational grid for the case a 1 which basically I am only discretizing the body. See now this entire the fluid domain it is only become the you know the body you see I, I really do not have to discretize the whole fluid domain even I do not have to discretize the, the free surface also only I need to discretize the body. So, the mesh is only for my body. Now, you can see the computational advantage over the finite difference and the finite element where you need to discretize the entire domain now as I see in the case B you can see here. I am discrete is a two dimensional problem of course, so I am discreting the whole fluid domain, but in case of case A 2 okay, in case of A 2 actually I only discretize the body along with the free surface. So, here of course, the discretization is more compared to A 1 right, however, still it is much much lesser than the case B. So, this is this is actually very 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 advantageous to use the boundary element over the finite element finite difference. And second point uh, mostly this boundary element uh, it is started after some kind of you know mathematical analysis we discretize things and we are getting the computational domain 
and you are finding the results. However, this finite difference scheme or, or, or com, you know uh, finite volume scheme, we started with the Navier-Stokes equation and started discretized at from that particular point. So, therefore, normally it is we can we are we observe that this boundary element somehow numerically more stable comparison to the finite difference or finite volume method. Okay. Now, what is the concept of the boundary integral method? Right now, I am just listed out this uh, the strategy. We really uh, today uh, maybe we are not getting everything what we are listing out. Maybe in coming future again slowly slowly I discuss the all the points. Okay. So, just listed out those points. The first you have to formulate the boundary variable problem for phi, which is the del square phi equal to 0 with the boundary conditions. So, once you find that then you have to find out the proper Green's function. Now, I so just right now we just find out the Green's function for uh, the simple problem, but for this Laplacian also you need to find out the Green's function and I, this is difficult. And actually we really not uh, you know uh, finding out the Green's function rather we are using some available Green's function. Then derive the appropriate integral equation, I will coming to this point later what when you say that derive the appropriate integral equation. Next point is that discretize the boundary, now is meshing I am talking about that we need to mesh the, the surface not the not the whole volume, but the surface. Okay. And then we have to distribute the phi over the boundary, what is what is the meaning of the distribution of the phi over the boundary, definitely we are going to discuss uh, in, in, in future lectures. So, right now just just I am listing out here that that what is our job. Okay. Next one is the apply this boundary conditions of course, we are going to apply the boundary conditions and then this convert this integral equation into the algebraic form. Now, this is a when you are solving some numerical method either the differential equation or the integral equation it has to finally, a system of linear equation and from this system of linear equation we are going to phi and once I get the phi we can find out this pressure, the force everything. So, this is the concept of boundary integral equation method or panel method this is the, the steps that we are discussing when from the next class onwards maybe we are uh, every point one by one we are going to discuss. Okay. So, so, this is the basic boundary integral equation again I am showing you right here this Green's function g is my choice and then we have to once I choice I make my choice of the Green's function where the g is known to me I can find out that uh, that phi that is distributed over the surface. Okay. What is alpha phi we have not discussed today we are going to discuss later on. Okay. Now, uh, so basic strategy for the panel method is, is followed that in panel method we, we divide the domain of definition with some quadrilateral or triangular panel that means that ship that ship actually I discretize with number of quadrilateral or triangular element okay, and we call that as a panel. And then actually we assume that velocity potential either constant or varying over this panel and then when I distribute the velocity potential I apply the Green's function Green's identity and solve a phi equal to b and get the solution for the phi. Again at present this is I know it is abstract, but in coming class we are going to slowly slowly we are going to uh, find out how I discretize the domain how I get the solution for phi. Now, this is the classical uh, slides like uh, that the choice of the Green's function this panel method can be uh, you know three types you can find out one is the Rankine panel method, one is frequency domain panel method and one is time domain panel method and then choice of the velocity potential it can be lower order and higher order. So, all this method all this different method actually we are going to discuss again our coming classes. Okay. Just just you know you can see that Green's function there are three choices 
in first choice we can have rankine, in the second choice we have the frequency domain, in the third choice we have the time domain. Okay. Now, this is basically the method A2 which is the rankine panel method and this is the computational grid for that. Okay. Now, you see the method A1 and this is the computational grid for that okay. and this is the grid for the higher order panel method. You can see that this is how we can discretize the surface. Now, in case of higher order we have the big big curvilinear patches, in case of a uh, other two we, we are having the quadrilateral patches. right? Okay. Some more exciting things coming of course, in, in future classes. So, till then thank you.